Taigi, sveiki visi, meli žiūrovai, kurie susirinko į mūsų dar vieną webinarą. Mano vardas yra Nelis ir aš atstovauju kas tu internešnių organizaciją. Ir šiandien mes turime webinarą apie studijas Švediją ir turime universiteto stovų iš Young Shoppingo universiteto. Tai bet tiesnių kalbų, tiesiog pradžiai pati platformą ir ką mes veiksime šio webinarą metu. Tai platforma yra labai paprasta, jūs matote šią transmisiją ir dažnėje pusėje priklausomai nuo jūsų įrenginio jūs galite matyti live chat'ą, tai į tą chat'ą prašome visų rašyti turimus klausimus ir tuos klausimus mes pasitengsime atsakyti arba viena webinaro įgoje, arba webinaro pabaigoje. Tai iš tikrųjų, jeigu turite klausimų, būkite aktyvus, nebijokite, nėra jokių pailų klausimų ir tikrai mūsų atstovas iš Young Shoppingo universiteto Erikas atsakysi visus jūsų klausimus. Taigi, ir dabar mes veisime į Young kalbą, nes kaip jūs suprantate, pats sustovas yra iš Švedijos ir jis prezentacija ir visą webinarą vės būtent Young kalba. So now we are switching to English and I'm representing our guest of this webinar. So it's Eric from Young Shopping University. So Eric, please say hello and short introduction about yourself. Okay, great. Uh, so, hi, uh, my name is Eric. I uh, work here at Yenshipping University. Uh, and uh, today I actually thought I would tell you about uh, a little bit about the advantages to studying in Sweden. Uh, so not just about us as uh, our university. Uh, I'll also tell you about us, but I thought that uh, it would be good to know why you should be considering Sweden definitely in your list of uh, potential study destinations. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so I guess we're gonna, we can move to the slides directly and we're going to start the first slide. So one moment and we are ready. Okay, so uh, we can actually switch to the next, uh, the next one. Um, and uh, well, today we're going to talk about uh, why Sweden, like I mentioned. And uh, well, one of the main reasons we think Sweden is a is a good uh, study destination, and uh, why you should be considering it as a study destination, is uh, it's an innovative country. Uh, so you can go to the next slide. Um, and actually, um, I, the, the question uh, here, the answer is actually visible, but the question is, what does the telephone handset and the Celsius thermometer have in common with Skype and Bluetooth? And actually, uh, the answer is right in front of you. Um, they're the results of Swedish research and innovation. So they're all Swedish innovations. And uh, not many people realize that, uh, especially the, the more modern uh, technologies like Skype and Bluetooth, which we're, uh, I'm using right now, actually. Can uh, go to the next one. And uh, Skype, of course, um, was started in 2003, uh, quite a long time now ago. Um, but the creator, Niklas Zenström, a Swedish guy, uh, together with a Dane, and some good Estonian programmers, uh, well, they uh, basically uh, revolutionized the way we communicate with Skype. Of course, nowadays, there are better apps and, and tools uh, for communication, but at the time, uh, it was revolutionary. Suddenly, we could communicate with, uh, with video and with audio for free over, over the whole world. Uh, okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, and this guy, more recently, uh, Daniel Eck, a Swedish guy, he invented uh, Spotify. And Spotify was his solution for combating piracy. Uh, Sweden, of course, uh, Lithuania as well. Um, people, of course, for a long time and still, still do today, uh, download music for free illegally. And of course, that's, um, um, you know, that's uh, one of the main reasons is because there, was no, there weren't affordable options. Uh, well, he, he changed that with, uh, with Spotify. And now, of course, Spotify is huge all, all around the world. Um, and we pay one price and we get uh, unlimited uh, music. We don't own it. The model is different. Um, but actually, that, uh, that has changed the way we consume music today. OK, next one. Uh, the Celsius thermometer, again, another Swedish uh, invention, Anders Celsius. Uh, next one. Uh, dynamite uh, was actually invented by Alfred Nobel. Not many people uh, know that, uh, that, uh, that fact, but um, 
uh, same guy uh, known for the Peace Prize, also uh, also for inventing dynamite. So that's a bit of a irony there. Okay, next slide. IKEA. Of course, everyone recognizes IKEA. It's one of the few brands that uh, that people right away, most people realize, is a Swedish brand. Um, and uh, of course, IKEA revolutionized. Uh, the furniture industry, um, but not just because of the design, uh, also because of this, the flat pack strategy. So suddenly you could take a room like this, like I'm in uh, now. Well, actually, you don't see my room, uh, but uh, you could take a small room and fill it with boxes um, that are it contain furniture that you you buy. You you know the way IKEA works. You take it home and you build it yourself. Well, this changed the logistics uh, of you know shipping and storage and. IKEA really, um, you know, changed the model. Okay, next slide. Uh, color screen graphics, another Swedish innovation. Uh, next one. Uh, the pacemaker. Next one. The ultrasound that we use all the time. Next one. Uh, the match stick, which the safety match, which goes out uh, by itself. This is actually from Jönköping, the the city that that uh, I'm in now. That uh, that I'm representing, uh, the University. So this safety match, you can visit the museum where safety matches were, were uh, began, basically. Okay, next one. The ball bearing, uh, quite an important in innovation. And the next one, uh, Volvo. Of course, we don't recommend uh, trying this move at home, uh, but uh, well, everyone knows Volvo, and Volvo Trucks is quite uh, one of the large, largest truck manufacturers uh, in the world. So uh, next slide. So the reason for uh, showing all of these uh, these uh, innovations or companies or um, uh, you know isn't to brag about uh, about how great Sweden is and look at all the great companies we have. It's to show you that um, innovation is valued. Uh, that a lot of Swedish brands, uh, like the ones you see on this uh, picture. Um, are not are very well known around the world, but not many people realize a lot of them are Swedish companies. Uh, for instance, H and M is everywhere, but not everyone can, knows it's um, it's a Swedish company. Um, so uh, Sweden itself, as a country, doesn't actually do such a great job at branding itself as a country. While Swedish brands are, uh, are of course, uh, quite have a big footprint around the world. Um, and innovation is valued even uh, at, at the university level. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of universities in Sweden, not just us, but uh, I would say most universities in Sweden have really good collaboration with local companies. The government invests a lot of money in research and innovation. So uh, you're going to get a, uh, an education that's theoretical, but also very practical and very uh, current and very many chances to, to uh, work with and meet companies and hear about case studies. and. Uh, you're going to be studying, you know, at a very um, practical, in a practical way. Okay, next, next one. And uh, innovation studies are done every year, and Sweden uh, tops the list all the time in terms of inno innovation index. Uh, this one uh, done by Cornell University uh, and some other organizations, but as well, in addition to other um, other you know, other studies, innovation studies. Uh, Sweden always uh, comes up quite high on the list. Uh, next. So, uh, why else should you, wh what's another reason you should st study and choose Sweden or at least consider Sweden as a study destination? Well, innovation and now quality. Uh, we can go to the next. Um, every year there's a, this ranking comes out, it's an Australian uh, ranking, it's called Universitas. And um, it shows every year Sweden quite high up on the on the list in terms of uh, this is measuring the quality of education and research around the world. And if you look at the scores, uh, actually, if you look at the top um, number two, three, four, uh, five, six, um, these uh, and and uh, even as you you look further down, um, the scores are all quite close. So every year Sweden pops around on this list, but basically it shows that. Um, it's it's uh, quite highly ranked when you look at um, what uh, they look at factors like what the government invests in education. Um, they look at um, you know the the levels of research output, uh, international research output, uh, the quality of of uh, 
um, campuses and um, and uh, yeah, etc. So um, okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, the other thing, the third reason and uh, last reason to study in Sweden is uh, uh, that it's uh, in international environment. And um, uh, actually, um, if you go to the next slide, um, it is uh, it has to be Sweden has to be internationally minded uh, because we're a small country and we uh, all over the world we export and we have uh, comp we have uh, global companies. Um, that need to, uh, we need to work with the rest of the world. So uh, English is the unofficial language. It's, uh, I would say that everyone speaks, uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that almost everyone speaks English uh, here in Sweden. Um, uh, there's a ranking looking at um, the level of English uh, outside of the UK in, in Europe and um, Sweden, the Netherlands and Denmark always come out in the top three. In terms of level of uh, level of English, so as an international student, that's a great bonus for you. You're coming to a country; it's not an English-speaking country, but the level of English is really good. So you're going to get a good good quality. Uh, you're going to understand your teachers, of course. They're going to be able to communicate at a high level in English. You're going to be able to get around everywhere with English. So that's an advantage. Uh, and I would say over 90% of the master's programs in Sweden are taught in English. Um, and more and more bachelor's programs are being delivered in English. Of course, we have more because of our international business school, which I'll mention in a bit. Uh, but English programs, um, uh, they, it's much like the Netherlands and Denmark. At the master's level especially, you'll find almost all of them. Okay, next slide. So here we are. Uh, here's the map. Uh, Jönköping is located in the south of Sweden. So. Thankfully, uh, we're in the warmer part. <laughs> a lot of people uh, think of Sweden as, you know, really, especially when we go and go uh, traveling in, in Asia, for instance, they think that there are polar bears wandering the streets and that there are ice monsters that are going to eat them up. Well, that's not true. It might be true in the north, but luckily we're in the south. Um, uh, but you know, of course, being in, uh, located a bit closer, that the winters are quite uh, moderate. We get snowy winters, but um, but they're not so so harsh because we're lucky we have the, the Gulf of Mexico uh, bringing us a bit of warm air. So um, we have a good location. We're right in between Copenhagen and Stockholm. Um, we're in a student city of about 130,000 people and about 10,000 students. So we're a medium-sized Swedish university uh, in, um, in uh, a pretty uh, central Scandin southern Scandinavian location. Um, it takes about three hours by car, train, or bus to get to Stockholm or Copenhagen. Uh, Gothenburg is the nearest international airport. Um, it's about an hour and a half away. And then Jönköping, we have our own airport um, to Frankfurt uh, direct, um, but uh, I'm not sure what would be uh, the best. I think uh, you could travel from, from Vilnius to perhaps direct to Gothenburg, uh, but we, we would have to look into that. I think that's a, there's a direct flight. Um, student union is really strong in Yonshipping. We organize a lot of uh, school trips and a lot of events. And actually, our uh, student union was voted having the best uh, student uh, kickoff week in all of Europe. So they're really proud. They're, it was last year's uh, uh, vote, but they're still pushing it out because they're really proud of that. OK, let's go to the next uh, slide. So there's a picture of campus. It's a bit hard to hard to see with the um, with the rectangles, but we're located in a student. It's a real student city. So um, Yonchipping is um, is filled with students, ten thousand of them, um, and about two thousand of those students are international from about eighty countries. So that round building that you see, the white one, um, that's our business school, and actually that is where we have the majority of our programs taught in English, um, and uh, approximately. 45% of the students in that round building in the business school come from outside of Sweden. And about 45% of our, uh, our uh, faculty also comes from outside of Sweden. So that makes us quite international. Uh, we have um, also partner universities, uh, the largest collection of partners of any business school in Sweden. Uh, so, and our other schools as well have a lot of partner universities. So many of our programs offer the opportunity to go on exchange in the um, in the third uh, third year of a bachelor's program or the second year of a master's program, 
So that's a great opportunity. We have great universities all around the world. Uh, and of course, you don't have to pay tuition fees to study in Sweden, as hopefully you already know. If not, I'm, I'm uh, uh, letting you know that it's completely tuition free for EU citizens to study in Sweden. And then when you go abroad to one of our partner universities, you don't pay their tuition fees. So that's quite a good deal. Uh, if you go within Europe, uh, you can even get Erasmus funding. So that's, that's excellent. So, all right, we're going to the next, uh, next slide. Um, and the next one again, sorry. <laughs> uh, good, so our business school was quite proud of this um, uh, about a year and a half ago. They were, um, it was published in this American journal. Uh, we were named one of the, within the list of 20, the 25 best businesses, business schools for family business. Um, and, uh, and actually they showcased one of our star professors, Matthias Nordfis, um, in, a, in a profile in, the, in that journal. So we were really proud and humbled to be part of a list of really top business schools around the world. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, we're also the only business school uh, in Sweden with uh, double accreditation. And that, uh, that means, what that means is, well, of course we're accredited by the Swedish government like all schools in Sweden, like all universities in Sweden. Uh, and that's a really good uh, measure of quality. Um, but uh, to be an international business school um, and to be sort of uh, recognized outside of Sweden, uh, our business school has gone after two really important accreditations, Equus, which is European, and AACSB, which is American. Uh, and these accreditations put us into the top 1% of uh, business schools worldwide. And basically they look, they come in and they look at and make sure that our teaching is, uh, is up to par, uh, that we have a good curriculum, that it brings in current research, that we have good um, uh, professors, um, a, a good professor to student ratio, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really good stamp of approval for you as a student. Uh, we're also really rank, well ranked in both entrepreneurship and in family business. These are the two research areas where we're, we're really best in. Um, and uh, of course, highly ranked in Sweden as well. Our School of Engineering is uh, part of CDIO, which was started at MIT. And basically what this means is learning by doing. It's a, um, they're part of a network, um, a collaboration um, that agrees to follow a set uh, of principles that you teach uh, with lots of practice. So even though you're getting a theoretical education, you're also getting a lot of practical elements. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, so why, how are we international? Go ahead and the next slide. Uh, well, um, this is also about learning by doing, but also international. The middle guy is, a, is an Italian uh, assistant professor, and uh, we have a bunch of international, all international students here uh, surrounding him. And these are students that each year travel to University of Vermont and participate in a case competition meaning um, they have to solve a business problem um, and pitch their solution uh, uh, to the case uh, to a jury. And um, for three years in a row, actually, our business school has won first prize. And that's quite impressive because usually these case competitions are filled with American and Canadian students that are uh, known for being quite competitive. Uh, okay, next, next slide. Um, <clears throat> This is another challenge where students, uh, uh, they form groups and they have to be groups from uh, different faculties. And they also, they have 24 hours to solve a business problem. Um, so these are some students that won first prize uh, uh, in one of the entrepreneurship challenges, which is about 6,000 euro. Um, and basically they have 24 hours and they usually don't sleep. Uh, to solve a problem, a business problem, and pitch their solution to a, a jury. And it's local, a local rich donor who, a businessman in, in, in Jönköping that donates every year to, the, to, a, to a fund for this, uh, to fund this competition. So it's a lot of fun, and uh, there's also a really good chance to, to win. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, we also have an uh, alumni network, which is great. This is just a short, a small sample of the companies that we have, um, students working at uh, all around the world. And uh, as, a, as a graduate, you have an access to this alumni network, which is a great resource for you. 
and we keep in contact with our alumni. We, uh, we value our alumni. They come back to the school. They do guest lectures. Uh, we feature them in our, in, our, uh, in our marketing materials on the web and in brochures. So, um, and we help connect our students to, uh, to jobs through our alumni network. So, next. Uh, Ralph Lauren, uh, the guy on the right, was recently, um, re uh, he stepped down as CEO, he still owns the company, clothing company, but uh, Stefan Larsson, a former gym student, uh, our business school uh, student, he, uh, he took over as CEO, so we're, we're proud of that. Okay, next slide. Uh, we also celebrate that we're international, that we're so diverse. This is um, uh, International Week, where we have a week-long uh, event celebrating um, the diversity of uh, campus, and uh, we're, it's open up to the public, so students represent their home country. Then there's Lithuania down in the in the middle, so that's uh, Lithuania representing. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, so we also have innovation taking place right on campus. Uh, you can go to the next slide. That's, of course, through all kinds of interesting uh, initiatives, like how we work together with companies at the, at, within programs, but also that we have a platform for students to, uh, to uh, pitch a business idea. Um, and we are actually open to students, uh, current students, starting businesses. And the st latest statistic is that one in 10 of our business school students actually start company start a company while they're studying. So this, this is a great uh, resource um, right on campus, owned by the university partly and partly by the, the city. So anyone can pitch their idea. And if, uh, if Science Park thinks it's a good idea, they'll invest uh, help, they'll invest time, they'll give the student office space, uh, they'll give the student uh, help with their business plan and help them with the details of starting, the, actually launching the company in Sweden, which is actually quite transparent and uh, very little bureaucracy, believe it or not, compared to many other countries. Okay, next. Another example of practice, this is the actually a course that students uh, take called Entrepreneurship and Business Planning, where they actually have to, at the end of the course, they have to actually pitch a product and try to sell their product. So they, they learn throughout the course and then they get to practice um, by doing. Okay, next slide. Same thing, Entrepreneurship Day. Okay, next. Uh, company visits to, for instance, Volvo. These are some engineering students visiting uh, Volvo, which is located in Gothenburg. Just a short, short ride away. Next one. Students are doing um, uh, building models, of course, in, in, uh, in en uh, engineering as well, engineering school. Uh, you can click to the next slide. You can see a field visit out to the out to the field to see, um, you know, how a windmill is actually working. Next, um, we also participate in this. Uh, there's a video that I can actually um, uh, send to send out a bit later. But um, we have a new team now preparing for this World Solar Challenge. Um, but la the last two years we've participated. And we at Jönköping University, JU Solar Team, has, has launched the car to compete on behalf of Sweden. Uh, in Australia, they basically uh, have to build a car that is uh, fully reliant on solar energy, and has, they, have, they drive it from the north to the south. So if you go to the next slide, you can see uh, this is the car that was built last year. The first year, we didn't do so well. We came close to last, but this year, or this car, the second year, we came out somewhere in the middle, a lot better. Uh, car costs a lot of money to build, so there are lots of local sponsors. You can see them on the uh, on the car itself. Um, next slide. Uh, here they are. At, they were just testing the car, and here they are shipping it off to to Australia. And if you click on the next one, you can see them actually driving it. Uh, the cockpit only fits one student, uh, and the rest of them, I think it was about 12 students, actually, that followed on this trip to Australia. The rest of them are in a bus behind, uh, taking turns, and it takes several days to, to complete. Okay, next one. So here's our list of our bachelor's programs. I won't go through all of them and, uh, and talk about all of them because there's good, good information uh, on the web. 
uh, and um, I of course have, uh, will bore bore you too much if I talk too much. So, uh, but so that you know, there are the first four are all at our business school um, within business administration, economics, uh, and uh, and um, yeah, those are all three-year bachelor programs. Uh, the uh, interesting thing about these programs uh, is that they offer uh, uh, one semester on exchange, uh, like I mentioned before, so that's a great opportunity. Usually it's in the final year, in the fifth semester, that students go abroad. Um, uh, but I believe uh, some programs offer it in a, different, a bit different timing. Um, the other interesting thing I'll just mention, international management offers is the host company program. So that means three of the courses in that program are actually direct uh, projects for a company, like uh, you'll form a group and you'll choose a company like IKEA, and then you will have a, a project um, that you have to work on, like a mini, mini consulting projects for the company. So that's quite unique. Uh, new media design, I'll just mention one thing about, and then we'll go to the next slide. But new media design is, um, a, we call it a unicorn program because it's quite unique. It is a blend between uh, graphic design and web development. And normally you don't have those two together. Normally you have the web designer, the web graphic designers and the developers in separate corners. But here you get, uh, it's an interesting perspective because you get front end web uh, development skills and graphic design skills. So quite a unique program. Okay, next slide. We have master's programs also. We have both one and two year programs. This slide has just the one year programs and the ones that are either one or two where you can choose. Um, the main difference between a one and a two year program, a lot of people ask that, is that uh, the one year programs uh, are not so flexible. Uh, they offer the opportunity to go, um, uh, they, are, they offer the opportunity for students that are maybe working to do a quick, to get a quick master's. Um, um, it's more intense, uh, but you get a master's of science, uh, the same degree that you would get with a two-year program. So that can be an advantage for some, some people. Um, if you notice, they're quite specialized masters. Uh, so um, we're looking for students, like in those first three programs, we're looking for students that already have a background in business, but that maybe want to specialize in, in marketing. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, we have a list of all of our two-year programs. They're really small here, but you'll find them all on our website in a better format with good descriptions and interviews and more information. Um, but basically, you see they're all very much specialization masters. So these are all two-year masters. And the difference, the two-year offers a bit more flexibility. So you could maybe do an internship. Um, you could go on exchange uh, in the third semester to one of our many partner universities. Um, or maybe you're interested in a career in research, um, and then a two-year program would be more suitable for someone looking to go to, a, uh, to do a PhD. And in Sweden, uh, P our PhD students, uh, especially here in Jönköping, are, are quite often recruited uh, from our, uh, the pool of master students that we have. So, and in Sweden, uh, it's quite often that students are paid to do research for four or five years. Uh, and they have usually other tasks while doing research. So that's quite a uh, unique opportunity to get. Uh, we have a lot of good research taking place, especially at our business school. So you can see the first pro uh, all the, the first one, two, three, four, five programs are at our business school. Um, actually six up to IT management and innovation, all at our business school. And then um, the, the remaining programs are at our school of engineering. Our engineering programs are more related to uh, manufacturing, uh, production, materials, um, as well as in, we have a program in industrial design. Okay, uh, next. Um, this I mentioned, uh, but it's good to see it one more time. No tuition fees, uh, no application fees. Um, so that's uh, quite a good uh, offer for EU citizens. Just to give you an example, our Bachelor programs, otherwise, for non-EU students, they cost about 10,000 euro per year, uh, and even more, 13, 14,000 euro per year for our uh, for our master's programs. So uh, for EU citizens, completely subsidized, completely free. Um, and cost of living is less than a lot of people think. Some people 
imagine that Sweden, uh, that Scandinavia is extremely expensive. That, that is definitely true for Norway <laughs> and more expensive in Stockholm, but we're a student city, uh, we're a smaller city, so uh, we guarantee accommodation and the prices uh, are not so high. So you can expect to spend about seven to 800 euro per month. And that includes everything from uh, your apartment to food, transportation, uh, books and clothing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just to give you an idea, the accommodation costs anywhere between 250 and uh, 400 euro per month. And we guarantee that we find it for you, but you fill out an application and can choose what, what kind of housing you'd like to, to live in. Okay, next slide. Our bachelor admission is still open, uh, but not for much longer. So if you're interested for this year, then for this intake starting in August, starting this autumn 2017, that means you need to apply within a few weeks. April 15th is the deadline. And some of our more popular programs are actually filling up. So I would recommend uh, an application right away if you're, if you're interested. What do you need to submit? Well, if you're in your final year of high school, then you need to have all but your final semester completed and you submit your transcripts uh, without the diploma. If you already have your diploma, you submit that. Uh, if you don't have the diploma, we can offer you a conditional offer as long as you have enough courses uh, that you've sent us half a year's results of your final year, along with all the other results from the, the other years of, uh, of high school. Uh, then we need a passport copy, just a regular copy will do. Uh, letter of motivation, and um, you need to prove your English with uh, an IELTS or TOEFL. Of course, uh, Kastu will uh, be able to help you with uh, with these details and help you uh, advise you on the application. Uh, if you go to the next, um, yeah, just well, a, a short interruption. Sure. Uh, everyone who is applying for Kastu, I would like to inform that. Uh, Deadline for submitting your application for our online system the 7th of April. So, we ah. just a shorter deadline, so may, we could make sure that everything is fine, your documents all attached, uh, motivational letters is, is fine, and all the documents are ready and uh, properly prepared for us to send for university. So, just uh, make sure that you have. A little bit less days but it's still manageable and you can do and if you have any questions regarding application form uh, regarding anything else so you can just contact our consultants and we're gonna help you and the, the last time a reminder the deadline at this moment is the 7th of April so just from our side so we can now continue great We're going back to the slides. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, and that was a good point um, that uh, April 7th uh, is the important deadline. Same goes for the masters. Um, here we need your bachelor's diploma and transcripts. Or if you're in your final, uh, final year of your bachelor's, you just need a letter indicating it's expected that you'll graduate or that showing that you have a certain remainder of courses left. Um, then the, the other things are the same, uh, transcripts, passport copy, letter of motivation, English proof, and that you meet the program requirements. So for every program, um, on the program page, there's actually a list of specific requirements. For example, a master's in strategic entrepreneurship, there you need to have done a bachelor's within, with enough credits in business administration. So just make sure to check to see if you meet those qualifications. And again, Castor can help, can advise on this. Okay, next slide. And I think I might have mentioned quite a bit of this, but so that you know, uh, these are the things we offer. We're quite used to receiving international students. We have a ton of them. Um, so we guarantee accommodation. We pick you up when you arrive in Yuan Shepeng at the train plane, at the train station or the bus station or the, uh, the airport. We drive you to campus. And then we help you to your accommodation. We drive you over to your accommodation with all of your bags. Uh, then we have an introduction week, or we call, we call it, but it's like an orientation week. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's one of the best uh, best times to most students have uh, to you know kick off their studies. But from a social standpoint, it's a lot of fun, and you get to know a lot of people, and it's um, a great beginning. 
Um, yeah, I think I named, uh, I mentioned a bunch of the other things. You can study Swedish, that's included if you want to do a Swedish course. Also, um, you're allowed to work um, and uh, there's no limit uh, to the amount of work, but it can be difficult for, for, uh, for students to find part-time work without learning a bit of Swedish. Some do, but I would never recommend or say that it's, it's, uh, you should expect it. But, um, but some students do find part-time jobs to, to give a little extra income. And, and that little bit extra, how much we can earn? I don't know, per week? Uh, hesitant to even uh, talk about how much, but it's quite good uh, you know, minimum wage in Sweden, so you could expect like, to earn a, over 10 euro an hour. Um, but I don't know how you know exactly how much you could earn. Of course, studies are the most important. So um, it's it is full time studies. So it will be hard to work more than you know 15, 10, 15 hours a week. Um, that would be probably a bit too a bit on the border of too much. Um, and then again, I also don't want to make it seem like it's super easy to find work. Um, but yeah, I know there are I know many international students that do find and that do supplement a little of their living costs that way. And, and then regarding those Swedish courses, so we have those Swedish courses for free or does it cost? Yeah, for EU uh, citizens, I believe it's, uh, it's free. Um, so that's a good offer. You have Swedish one, two, and three, uh, and you can um, basically learn conversational Swedish, um, which could be an advantage even though it's a small language. Uh, out in the world, if you're thinking of eventually maybe working for a Swedish company. Of course, it, it can help you here in Sweden to find some part-time work, but even more importantly, um, in the future, it could help you get an in with a, a, a global Swedish company out in the world. All right, and we have also one more question from participants. Uh, what are the yeah. benefits of being a student in Sweden? I mean, public transport, etc. So do you have some kind of discounts or, or anything related to that? Yeah, as a student in Sweden, you you have a lot of benefits, actually. You get a, a student uh, card, and that gives you access. You become part of the student union. All students become part of the student union. Um, and that membership, which is very small uh, price, I think it's like, I don't know, it's like 20 or 30 euro, uh, that gives you access to um, a lot of discounts. So, for instance, you get the bus card is discounted, and the bus transportation is great in Yenchipping, so you can use it to get everywhere. And I think you pay maybe 40 euro a month. That was included in the living cost, something like that. Don't quote me on it, uh, but it gives you really great um, access. You can also buy discount tickets to take the bus to Stockholm, or um, I believe uh, there's a whole list of benefits. Student Union is really strong in Sweden, so they, they will inform you about everything, even before you arrive, I believe. And uh, as we have one more question related to the, the job, so maybe you can give some kind of, I don't know, advice or tips how to, to find a job and how to get a job in Sweden while being a student. To be honest, I, I would, I'm not the best person uh, to answer that question. I think that you know, we don't really get involved so much uh, for in, when it comes to part-time. Do you mean part-time work, or does he mean like find a career? Yeah, it's like more part-time. Okay, yeah, we that's not something that we really work with. We work more with helping students find careers after. And there we have a career center that helps students with everything from practicing interview, uh, mock interviews, to they have lots of guest lectures in English, of course. Um, they help students with uh, reaching out to companies, etc. Uh, but when it comes to part-time work, honestly, the best is the student network. So students usually meet other students, and through that network, they find uh, opportunities. The ones that push, that knock on doors at cafes and things like that, they maybe find some small bit of work. But like I said before, I really don't would never sort of recommend expecting to find it because it can be difficult. All right, and one more question from Milda. So what are the lectures uh, attendance requirements? Is it hard to combine studies and work? So it's like, yeah. maybe you can answer our first That's part more about, yeah. I can answer that just from the, the standpoint of the, the structure. Um, and that is that uh, it's quite unique actually in Sweden and it varies from course to course in that it varies from course to course. So you may have one course where you have no mandatory 
sessions where everything is just up to you. You may have other courses that you have a lot of projects with other classmates so that you're separated into groups and uh, you meet you you have a lot of self responsibility you have to meet with those groups and work on a project and then you have to come back and and present it uh, to the to a larger group and uh, there's a lot of work like this and then they may have courses that are completely different that are mandatory lectures where you have to attend every single lecture so it barely varies from course to course and uh, you never have more than two courses at a time to manage that's also maybe a bit unique to Sweden. Uh, so you have um, the semester is divided into periods, and you have uh, you you do two courses at a time. Those two courses end with an exam or an assignment, and then you have two more courses, uh, and then the semester ends. So that's the way the the sort of the structure is. Yeah. So I guess we can uh, come back to the slides and then. Uh... Sure. Uh, we can go to the next one. And actually, there are no more, it's just some pictures. Uh, these are some students that uh, went up into the north of Sweden on a student trip. Uh, students get around more than, uh, than people that live here in Sweden for, for their whole lives. They have all kinds of discount student trips to get involved in. So these are a bunch of students that go up to the north of Sweden to go dog sledding. Uh, they also visit the ice hotel. They, they go skiing in Norway. They see the uh, midnight sun in the in, in the uh, nice weather when it's light 24 hours a day. Here are some students doing a trip to Norway, uh, hiking on the glacier. Next one, and again in Norway again. So um, lots of opportunities to to get out and explore. Also, they do trips throughout the continent of Europe. Here are some students arriving around pickup weekend. You see all the luggage and uh, students. Uh, usually arrive to nice weather and uh, have a really uh, good good start. If you go to the next slide, you'll actually see that there's uh, this is a festival which we've had now two years in a row where campus is closed off and uh, bands are invited and there's food trucks and uh, it's uh, really a lot of fun. Uh, so there's there's all kinds of um, yeah good social activities to get involved in, in in addition to your studies. Never a complaint that there's nothing to do. So it's a real student city. The student life is really excellent. So that was it. Um, I can answer any any questions if people have them. All right. So I'm looking for questions, and currently um, I ask you some questions uh, in previous uh, minutes, and those were most related to the job, uh, the lectures, attendance, and benefits. So. Currently, I don't see any questions. Maybe if people, uh, yeah, people, if you have still questions for the, everything that's related to uh, studies in Sweden, to maybe have some, I don't know, personal questions to the, to the representative of Young Shopping University, Eric, so you can do it right now in case you're, you're still thinking, maybe you have some kind of doubts or you would like to contact later, so you can do it uh, as well later. I believe I, I will be able to give also the contacts of Eric in case any, any, any specific questions, but all the times as we are working uh, as agency that helps people to uh, fill all the documents and apply and uh, get accepted to the university and in abroad, including the Sweden and your shopping university, so you can just directly contact our consultants and we will help with any uh, procedure of, of the process of application. So I see that people are saying thank you, Milda saying thank you. Milda, thank you for, for, for participating and giving questions uh, for us. And as we don't have any questions, maybe you have some kind of final tips for students, uh, maybe just, you know, to, to clarify if Maybe there are some people who are already are next to the line to, to send application or not to send. So maybe you can give some kind of, I don't know, uh, yeah. tips. Yeah, my, I think my, yeah. my tip would be that this, this year we, we're noticing a big increase in applications, actually year on year, uh, last year and this year. Uh, so that means that um, we're noticing a lot of, uh, a lot more applications. So it's quite competitive. So I would say definitely, uh, get your application off if you consider if you're even considering it. Uh, do an application uh, now rather than waiting, because the closer we get to the deadline, 
which is very soon, obviously, um, with your deadline is just a, a week or so, um, the more likely it will be that programs fill, fill up, especially the more popular ones. So um, definitely do a, a second, you have the chance to do a first choice and a, and a backup uh, program. So I would definitely recommend that um, to choose something related, uh, especially if you're looking at the business programs. There are a lot of programs, if you look at the courses, that are, uh, can be a bit interrelated. So, um, so yeah, those are my, uh, my tips for, uh, at least for now, since we're, um, we're so close to the, uh, the application deadline. All right, and I see that we have still one the last question from Alex. So which countries do the exchange students go to? Oh, yeah, I wish I could show you right now the partner lists that we have. Um, but uh, you can find it on our website. And basically, we have about uh, 350 partner universities scattered throughout the globe. So you can't name a continent that we don't have uh, loads of partner universities. So we have students going, for example, for example, we're really good in entrepreneurship, uh, you know, business startup. But um, you can go to the US. You can, we have students going to Babson. Uh, Babson is ranked number one in the world when it comes to entrepreneurship. Uh, their tuition fees normally are like $50,000 a year. So you would get that, you wouldn't have to pay anything. Uh, so yeah, we have students going for a semester to Babson, to the US. Uh, we have students going to Australia, to uh, we have some, some great universities in China, in, uh, uh, in, in Southeast Asia, we have uh, partners. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity all through Europe, throughout Europe as well. All right, so thank you very much, Eric, for your answers and for your presentations. And again, thank you for everyone who participated in this webinar. If you have joined this webinar later, you can also watch the video after we're going to finish this uh, translation. So, yeah, I guess we had a really great time, 45 minutes, as we expected. And we had a great presentation why you should study in Sweden, in Jönköping University especially. So thank you once again, Eric. Eric, thank you for your presentation. And we hope to have uh, quite a lot of applications uh, this year for your university. And finally, I'm saying goodbye for you until the next times. Okay, thank you.